the day spring, or dawning of the day in the east. The first chapter, an inquisition into the divine being in nature, concerning both the qualities, the good and the evil. Though flesh and blood is not able to conceive and apprehend the being of God or the divine being, but the spirit, when it is enlightened and kindled from God, yet if we will speak of God and say what he is, then, first, we must diligently consider the powers in nature, second, also the whole creation, heaven and earth, third, the stars, the elements, and creatures, which had their descent from thence, also the holy angels, devils, and men, moreover, heaven and hell. Of the two qualities in one, number two, in this consideration are found two qualities, a good one and an evil one, which are in one another as one thing. In this world, in all powers, in the stars and the elements, as also in all the creatures, and no creature in the flesh, in the natural life, can subsist unless it contains the two qualities. Number three. Now here we must consider what the word quality means, or is. A quality is the mobility, boiling, springing, and driving of a thing. Number 31. But it contains yet another species or kind, namely, fierceness or wrath, which is the very house of death, a corruption of all good, a perdition, and destruction of the life in the flesh. Number 32. For if it be elevated too much in any creature, and be inflamed in heat, then flesh and spirit separate, and the creature loses its life, and must die. For it moves and kindles the element of fire. For in the great heat and bitterness no flesh can subsist. Of this sweet quality. Number 33. This sweet quality is set opposite to the bitter, and is a gracious, pleasant quality, a refreshing of life, an alien of fierceness. It makes all pleasant and friendly in every creature. It makes the vegetables of the earth fragrant and of good taste, according fair, yellow, white, and ruddy colors. Number 34. It is a glimpse and source of meekness, of pleasure, of heavenly joyfulness, a house or a mansion of the Holy Ghost, a qualification of love and mercy, a joy of life. Number 35. But it contains also a fierce or wrathful source, a source of death and corruption. For if it is kindled in the bitter quality in the element of water, then it breeds diseases and the plague or pestilence and corruption of the flesh. Number 36. But if it is kindled in the heat and bitterness, then it infects the elements of air, whereby is engendered a sudden spreading plague and sudden death. Of this sour quality. Number 37. The sour quality is set opposite to the bitter and sweet, and is a good temper to all, a refreshing and cooling when the bitter and sweet qualities are elevated too much, and is a longing delight in the taste, a pleasure of life, a stirring, boiling, flowing joy in everything, a desire, longing, and lust of joyfulness, a still joy or habitation of the spirit. Thus it is a temperature to all living and moving creatures. Number 38. It contains also a source of evil and corruption. For if it is too much elevated, or it stirs too much in anything, so that it is inflamed, then it engenders sadness and melancholy. Number 39. In the water it causes stink, putridness, and rankness, a forgetfulness of all good, a sadness of life, a house of death, a beginning of sorrow, and an end of joy. Of the instrument and saltiest quality. Number 40. The saltiest quality is a good temperature in the bitter, sweet, and sour, making everything pleasant. It opposes the rising of the bitter quality as also of the sweet and sour, lest they should be inflamed. It is a sharp quality, a delight in the taste, a source of life and joy. Number 41. It contains also fierceness and corruption. Being inflamed in the fire, it engenders a hard, tearing, and stony nature, a fierce, wrathful source, a destruction of life whereby the stone or gravel is engendered, causing great pain and torment. Number 42. But if it is inflamed in the water, it engenders in the flesh scabs, sores, pot, leprosy, and is a mourning house of death, a misery, and forgetting of all good. End of the first chapter. Or mitigates the heat, then both their qualities are ratified and made thin.
and the bitter quality draws them together so that they become dewy. Number 19. But the air has its original and greatest motion from heat, and the water has it from cold. Number 20. Now the two qualities wrestle continually one with another. The heat consumes the water, and the cold condenses or crowds the air. Now air is a cause and the spirit of every life and motion in the world, whether it be in flesh or in any of the vegetables. All, whatever is, has its life from the air and nothing. Whatsoever can subsist without air that moves and is in this world. 20, number 21. Water also springs in every living and moving creature in the world. In the water consists the body of everything, as the spirit consists in the air, be it in vegetables or in flesh. Number 22. And these two are caused by heat and cold, and qualify or mix, and operate together as one thing. Number 23. Now in these two qualities, two other species or kinds are to be observed, viz. a living and a dead operation. The air is a living quality. If it is temperature or moderate in the thing, and the Holy Ghost reigns in the calmness or meekness of the air, and all the creatures rejoice therein. Number 24. But there is a fierceness or wrath also in it, so that it kills and destroys by its terrible disturbance. But the qualification takes its original from the fierce disturbance or elevation, so that it moves and drives in every creature, from whence life has its original and exists and therefore both of them must be in this life. Number 25. The water also contains a fierce, deadly spring, for it kills and consumes, and so all things that have a life and being must rot and perish in the water. Number, number 26. Thus is heat and cold a cause and original of water and air, in which everything acts and stands, every life and mobility stands therein. Of this I shall write more plainly when I speak of the creation of the stars. Of heat, number four, as for example, heat which burns, consumes, and drives forth all, whatsoever comes into it which is not of the same property, and again it enlightens and warms all cold, wet, and dark things, it compacts and hardens soft things, of light and fierceness. Number five, it contains likewise two other kinds in it, namely, first, light, and second, fierceness, of which, take notice, the light or the heart of the heat is in itself a pleasant, joyful glance or luster, a power of life, in the lightning and glance of what is far off and is a source of heavenly kingdom of joy. Number six. For it makes all things in this world living and moving, all flesh, trees, leaves, and grass, grow in this world in the power of the light and have their life therein, viz. in the good. Number seven. Again, it contains also a fierceness or wrath which burns consumes and spoils. This wrath or fierceness springs, drives, and elevates itself in the light, and makes the light movable. Number eight. It rustles and fights together in its twofold source as one thing. It is also one thing, but it has a double source. The light subsists in God without heat, but it does not subsist so in nature. Number nine. For all qualities in nature are one in another as one quality, in that manner, as God is all, and as all things descend and come forth from him. For God is the heart or fountain of nature, from him comes all. Number 10. Now the heat reigns and predominates in all powers of nature, and warms all, and is one source or spring in all. For if it was not so, the water would be too cold, and the earth would be congealed, and there would be no air. Number 11. The heat is predominant in all, in trees, herbs, and grass, and makes the water movable, 
so that through the water springing out of the earth there grow herbs and grass. And it is therefore called a quality, because it operates, moves, and boils in all, and elevates all. Number 12. But the light in the heat gives power to all qualities, so that all grow pleasant and joyful. Heat without light avails not the other qualities, but is a perdition to the good, and evil source of spring. For all is spoiled in the fierceness of wrath of the heat. Thus the light in this heat is a quick spring, or a living fountain, into which the Holy Ghost enters, but not into the fierceness of wrath. Number 13. Yet the heat makes the light movable, so that it springs and dries forth, as is seen in winter, when the light of the sun is likewise upon the earth. But the hot rays of the sun cannot reach into the earth, and that is the reason why no fruit grows in winter. Of the Qualification of the Cold Quality Number 14. Cold is a quality also, as well as heat. It qualifies or operates in all creatures, whatsoever come forth in nature, and in all whatsoever move therein, in men, beasts, fowls, fishes, worms, leaves, and grass. Number 15. And heat is set in opposition to it, and qualities in it, as if it was one and the same thing. But it opposes the fierceness or rage of the heat and allies the heat. Number 16. It contains also two sorts or species in it, which are to be observed, viz. It mitigates the heat and makes all things pleasant and is in all creatures a quality of life. For no creature can subsist without cold, for it is a springing, deep driving mobility in everything. Number 17. The other kind of species is fierceness, for where it gets power, it suppresses all and spoils all, even as the heat does. No life could subsist in it if the heat did not hinder it. The fierceness of cold is a destruction to every life in the house of death, even as the hot fierceness also is. Of the Qualification of the Air and the Water Number 18. Air has its original from heat and cold, for heat and cold works powerfully and replenish all, whereby is caused a lively and stirring motion. But when the cold allies 